Welcome back. You're watching The Capital Point. And if you're just joining us, we're talking all matters e-commerce and looking at some staggering data in the first part of our show uh, that showed the opportunities in the industry, the challenges. I'm now in studio with uh, William Bentel, the General Manager for Glovo Kenya. Welcome to Thanks the show. Much. So Glovo yeah. wants to become the everything app for cities. What does that mean? Well, what it means is essentially you can have anything delivered to you within a matter of minutes from your city. So what we focus on is a whole range of products, um, different categories ranging from hot food, uh, groceries, pharmacy products, um, pretty much anything you could want delivered to you in 45 minutes. Um, and you, different categories for us range in time from 30 minutes up to about sort of 46 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally speaking, it's all about convenience. So how does it work, um, say, for somebody who hasn't used it before? So you have to download the app, um, and once you have the app, you create an account, um, and you have a series of options. It's an extremely intuitive uh, app, um, very, very easy to use. Um, you, and, and then really you, you can figure out anything that you want. You can either choose from a list of um, options, um, stores that are listed on Global, or you can click the Anything app and simply type in anything you want. Um, a couple of days ago, I had a very specific requirement for my child. Um, I, I ordered the product and 30 minutes later, it was, it was there in my house. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we do is we, we connect users to couriers um, and you can send anything you want across um, the city very, very quickly. So are, are the cur couriers the Glovers? I, when I was reading about it, I got a little bit confused about that. Yeah, we, we, we call the couriers who use the platform Glovers. Um, they're essentially the, the couriers who sign up to our platform. Mm -hmm. And we like to think of them as a, a sort of cut above some of the others um, working um, in various cities that we operate. Um, they, they do receive sort of training through the government. Um, we have a public-private partnership with the NTSA, for example, where they receive training in traffic safety and mm -hmm. traffic regulations. Um, so yeah, we brand them Glovers. So we'll not see them s s jumping the lights like, like most of the, <laughs> the border borders that we see. All right, so Glovo set up in Nairobi in January of uh, 2019. Just tell us a little bit about your experience between then and now, j a year later. Sure, I mean, it's, it's been a story of growth, really. Um, when we entered the market, things were naturally slow, as with any um, company entering a new market. Mm -hmm. um, I actually only arrived in April. Uh, but the team tell me about sitting around watching the, the live order dashboard, mm. hoping that the first order or the second order would come in. <laughs> and if you fast forward a few months from there, um, really we were dealing with thousands of orders um, every single day um, and, and huge growth and huge interest in the market for, for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's really resonated is this idea that the product is all about convenience. We're not, we're not a standard e-commerce offering. It's really focused on the customer and mm -hmm. anything that we can do to make your life easier within the city. What are some of the key highlights for you for, for 2019? For 2019, I think it was all about like signing um, big partners um, that consumers really um, resonated with. Uh, for example, our, our first were Simbisa, which has mm -hmm. chicken in, pizza in, and so forth. Art Cafe was, was the second big partner that we signed. And really, the momentum developed from there. Um, since then, we've been able to add a whole range of content to the platform. And each time we're able to add new content, things that people really want, um, it, it's a bit of a win for us. So for example, last week we added cooking gas. Um, now if you run out of cooking gas, um, you can, at the tap of a button, have it delivered to your mm -hmm. home. What would you say are some of the products that you know, Kenyans really want, or some of the interesting products? Uh, because you say you can deliver anything. We can deliver anything. I think, the, 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 naturally speaking, you have to eat three times a day. So mm. hot food so and food groceries um, are fast-moving items that, that represent something like 70% of our volume. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, um, pharmacy items, over-the-counter items, um, drinks. So like through the course of an evening, someone might order um, a, a few beers, some condoms, mm. and actually the next day, um, there's a booming trade for pregnancy tests as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good Lord. All right, so tell us a little bit about, um, there was a big funding last year, um, and of course this was big news. There's a lot of interest in the e-commerce space um, as per the da data that we're seeing coming out. 17 billion for um, Glovo as a whole, the, the parent company, I believe. Well, the valuation of Glovo is now over 1 billion, so mm -hmm. it became Spain's second ever unicorn mm -hmm. um, technology company valued over 1 um, billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, the actual round that we raised was uh, around 160 million euros. Mm -hmm. 
which is in Kenya shillings 17 yeah. billion. Yeah. So what's the money for? So the money is for expansion um, and for perfecting our operations um, at, the, uh, at the same time. And so there are many new markets that we want to enter. At the same time, we know that to, to really innovate and keep pace and doing the things that we do well, um, we need to invest in technology. Mm -hmm. um, we employ hundreds of technology engineers and data scientists who, whose work really goes into making the product what it is. Um, and the money that we've raised um, is being spent on the technology team as well as entering new countries. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the key challenges, um, not just in Kenya, but in Africa as a whole, uh, when we read up on e-commerce is one is infrastructure, the other is logistics, which, which um, sort of come top of the list in terms of the challenges that companies like yours face. And in your expansion, as you get out of Nairobi and into um, other cities, in, in the country. What are some of the biggest challenges in terms of logistics that you face? Well, we're probably not um, a normal e-commerce company. Um, others would struggle perhaps with addressing systems outside mm -hmm. of Nairobi. That's a very common thing. For us, actually, the, 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 the big draw about Nairobi and other cities like Nairobi is the urban chaos, right? So, th so there's been rapid urbanization. Um, the infrastructure, to be frank, is not up to, mm -hmm. to the number of people, the number of cars you have in the city. Um, this represents a huge opportunity for us. Every time I'm stuck in traffic for one hour, two hours, three hours, um, I think to myself, this is one of the main reasons why Glovo exists, mm -hmm. um, and it's to help people navigate their, their busy lives. So instead of being stuck in traffic on a round trip to the mm -hmm. supermarket, mm -hmm. um, you can order Glovo and it's there with you in 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having to, 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 to spend time in shops and traffic, you can put your kids to bed or go and have that drink with an old friend. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really actually creating extra time in, in everyone's days. And really the, the app is designed around that time saving. Um, it's not just about shopping, just about e-commerce, it's about this convenience. Now as you, as, as you head out of Nairobi, um, some, some, some of those problems around urban infrastructure aren't mm -hmm. quite so acute. Um, in some of the smaller cities, someone might want to actually get in their car and drive down the road because they want to get out of the house and, and um, mm -hmm. eat in a restaurant. Um, so I, I would say at the moment what we're looking at is w what is the real demand outside Nairobi. I think it's good. Um, we've seen promising signs. Um, but certainly Nairobi is where, you know, the, 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 the core is. Mm -hmm. Speaking of demand, um, there's been, of course, the growth of M-Pesa, development of M-Pesa, um, penetration of smartphones um, as well, which currently stands at 47 million, which, you know, could possibly mean one smartphone for every Kenyan, although mm -hmm. most people would probably have one or two, mm -hmm. um, especially within the, the, urban, the urban cities. Are you seeing, or is that, directly reflected into the growth within e-commerce? Yes, it is. Pe pe people have smartphones. A lot of people have smartphones. Uh, the cost of data has also come down dramatically mm -hmm. over the last few years, and um, so people are able to use the smartphones. I would say one of the biggest constraints in most people's smartphones is the amount of space they have and the amount of apps that you can actually have on the phone. Um, and there's w what we see from focus groups and feedback from customers is they're fed up having six different apps to do six different things. And actually they want to sort of consolidate and have one or two that really help them. Um, and more and more we're seeing that Glovo is that chosen app that actually helps them navigate the city and helps them navigate all the different things that they need to do. Mm -hmm. But technology is, is hugely important. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges is actually getting people to use that technology and, and that will certainly be a focus for, for us moving forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, still staying with the issue of demand, I read an, an interesting statistic um, online that in 2019, Glovo opened um, a, in a new city every four days? <laughs> yes, it was, a, it was a period of very rapid expansion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we expect the same this year? I think this year, uh, certainly here in Kenya, um, there may be a few ad additional city openings. Um, but right now, our focus is on um, perfecting the, the range of products, uh, categories that we have available. Mm -hmm. As I said, we're putting a lot of efforts to make sure that uh, this is the one place you need to go to for everything. And we're really trying to sort of put ourselves in the shoes of the consumers, um, and especially consumers who aren't yet using technology. Um, there's a huge mm -hmm. demand for um, similar kinds of services 
but um, not on an app, right? So most people have the number of a Boda driver um, who will go and run an errand for you or go and buy something for you. More affluent people may have a driver who can go and perform the same tasks. Um, but w actually, our value proposition is to say we can do these same things uh, far quicker, um, cheaper, and without you having to pick up the phone and speak to someone and figure out where they are in the traffic yeah, and yeah. Um, make payments um, to the shop and so forth. So, yeah. so um, our focus really is on making sure that's all in one place. So for those who do not have smartphones, how, will you, how, do, you, how do you plan to look at that market? So I think there are a couple of things. Firstly, it's about education. Um, unfortunately, this is a very intensive um, business. Um, it's, our communications range from a billboard or a television advert right down to actually getting onto the street and having activation teams talk to people about the product. Um, in some cities like Nairobi, that's actually easier. Um, even if someone hasn't used a similar app, um, we go to churches, for example, and this is quite new to people, um, they still are familiar with... Um, uh, ride hailing apps and, and other things that they may have used that are similar. Um, you go to some of the other cities in, in Kenya um, and really you're starting at a far lower base of knowledge and it takes that much more time to educate people. Mm -hmm. So I think while we are excited about the potential outside Nairobi, there is that much extra education and, and, and it's a slower process. Mm -hmm. So your delivery charges are typically between 50 shillings and 100 shillings? Yes. What um, does that say about your business model? Um, you know, just out of... Uh, is it, is it volumes? Is it margins? How do you make your money? Uh, we're definitely a volume business. Um, the, 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 our costs are spread across an enormous number of orders. Um, uh, I mean, looking at the sort of technology that's required to, to run um, an on-demand e-commerce company, as I said, we employ hundreds of engineers. The only real way to make that work is to spread that cost across millions of orders, like millions or tens of millions of orders, if you want the, the sort of cutting edge technology. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so yeah, that, 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 that's a key focus. Mm -hmm. What trends do you expect to see um, this year, not just in, in Kenya, maybe Africa as a whole? Because I know one of the strategies for Glover this year is to look at the sub-Saharan markets. Um, what trends are you expecting within those spaces? So it's definitely going to be another year of growth. Um, we, we see continued growth um, and demand for our product. Um, and that, that, that's really growing the market. It's not just cannibalizing our competitors mm -hmm. in the space. Um, so we do want to grow the market and, and help grow the economy. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably going to see a couple of other things. Uh, capital has been harder to come by for, for companies in, in the on-demand space. Um, SoftBank, which was one of the biggest investors, um, had their fingers burnt with a couple of IPOs that did not go well. Um, so capital, as it will be harder to come by, um, companies will probably consolidate. So you'll start to see um, companies exiting markets um, to really focus where their strengths lie. Mm -hmm. um, related to that, uh, competition. Uh, if you look at Kenya, there is quite a lot of competition in this space. Um, and it's the same in a few other sort of high-profile markets. Mm -hmm. I think that competition will, will continue, um, which in the end is a good thing, right? I think for Absolutely. customers... Yeah, especially for the customer. <laughs> yeah, you'll see great innovation, um, quicker delivery times. You're going to see new products being offered. Um, and I think it will be a really exciting time for the yeah. customer. Now, the tech ecosystem in Kenya has been, well, has undergone quite an interesting phase, at least in the past decade. Uh, we've seen a number of mergers, acquisitions, and of course, in a space like yours, um, size matters. What are your thoughts around the, you know, the acquisition space? Uh, as I said, like, w there will be consolidation, and some of that will happen through mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Um, you seeing in the UK where I'm from, um, some of the biggest players now are merging or being acquired. Um, in in uh, Africa, you're seeing companies exiting markets. Um, sometimes that's through M&A, sometimes it's not. Um, Glovo is really focused on uh, growing organically, so we're not specifically looking for acquisition targets, mm -hmm. um, certainly in Africa. Um, we are, we're really seeking to, we, we've proven ourselves, I would say, to be able to enter markets quickly, um, both from our marketing and operational capacity, and, and we so, see no real reason to, to acquire a company um, rather than grow organically. All right. So as we wind up, uh, what will it take to win? You know, t talking about the competition in the space, uh, but Glovo has been, you know, one of the most visible and, if I may use the word, aggressive um, in the marketing space, at least. What, what will it take for you to get to the top? 
Sure. I mean, I think the first thing, if we, we look back where we come from, um, we feel we've made a huge impact in the economy. Um, and that's important for us. As we grow, it's not just being aggressive for ourselves. It's about having an impact in the economy. We started, we, we have a team here of 30 people. We create um, income um, generating opportunities for a thousand partners. Um, it, it's really gratifying to see those partners taking their order bills with, with Glover and raising money to invest and grow their own businesses. Um, of course, a number of riders um, who also use the platform. Um, and we're just actually now relocating um, our tech hub um, that focuses on business operations from elsewhere in Africa to Kenya, which will create yeah. 60 jobs. And this is all part of the story of what it takes us now to succeed. Um, we are going to be focusing um, really um, hard on cost measures. Um, so relocating these, these agents um, from um, Egypt, actually, through to Kenya. Um, is going to have a, a very strong um, cost implication for us, um, good cost implication for us. Um, and we're also going to have to focus on innovation. We're going to have to focus on converting those riders, uh, sorry, those customers who are, are, are offline into online. We're going to have to focus on our partnerships, making sure that we're adding value for absolutely everyone. Um, and I think if we do all these things uh, well, uh, we've got every chance of success in this market, not just for us, but growing the economy. All right. Thank you very much. We've been chatting with uh, William Bentel, General Manager, Global Kenya. Thank you so much for keeping us company on the Capital Point tonight. Until next Wednesday, I am Terry Anchabet. Have a good night.